Hello again and welcome to another chemistry lesson. We're looking at the polarity of a molecule. What do I mean by the polarity of a molecule? Well, you might recall that uh, we looked at, uh, at ionic and covalent bonds and the one ionic bond we looked at was uh, salt. Okay, Salt was a bond between sodium and chlorine. So if I take sodium, uh, that's in A, the sodium has one valence electron that he gives away to chlorine, giving him a positive charge. Okay. Chlorine on the other end has, has needed one, um, and when he receives that electron, he gets a negative charge. So if I look at the molecule itself, the molecule ends up having a positively charged atom on the one end and a negatively charged atom on the other end. That makes this molecule a polar molecule. It is now polar. Now, what effect does this have? Well, the effect of polar molecules is that they will attract other polar molecules. Okay? Now, for example, in salt itself, this is table salt, okay, another sodium chloride molecule the positive end will be attracted to the negative end and the negative end will be attracted to the positive end so that we get structures that end up looking like this okay end up getting a bunch of molecules closely structured together like like this okay where positive ends are um, attracted by negative ends, negative ends are attracted by positive ends, and so forth. So that it is a very, very strong attractive force between the molecules inside here. Okay, so that is why salt is so hard. And when you try and bend salt, it breaks because you are breaking this. Uh, attractive forces between them okay um, instead of bending them so that is a this is a polar uh, uh, an example of a polar molecule okay so this is the uh, um, is an ionic bond you might have recalled okay so an ionic bond ionic bond is the strongest type of polar molecule that I can find and you will remember that I used the scale okay where we looked at the difference in electron negativity in other words I took the electron negativity of chloride chlorine and the um, and I subtracted the electron negativity of sodium and that gave me a value if that value was was closer to 3.3 .3, it was an ionic bond. If that value is closer to zero, it was a covalent bond. And you might recall that a covalent bond is where I, instead of giving away, I'm actually sharing my electron. Okay? Both of them have an, uh, both of the molecules are, um, want to attract an electron with the same amount of passion, if I may use that word. So instead, they then rather share it. Now, the po polarity of a, a molecule is also dependent on this as you can see ionic bonds are very polar okay polar and covalent bonds are very nonpolar okay why nonpolar well you will re um, remember the purest ionic bond that I showed you was when one molecule share one atom shares his valence electron with another atom from the same element okay for example hydrogen H2 okay hydrogen shares his one valence electron with another hydrogen that produces H2 and this this uh, the electron sorry the electron negativity's difference the difference in electron negativity for H2 is zero because it's it's this one and that one has the same one so if I subtract it I get zero which means that this is a very non-polar um, molecule because 
they're they are sharing it. The one is in positive and the other one is negative. As a matter of fact, um, rather what we would have is a very neutral um, molecule. Okay, so at what at what point here does something go from polar to nonpolar? And it, remember, it's not the electronegativity; it's the difference between electronegativity. Well, if the difference is between zero and 0 0.4 so up to about 0 0.4 these will be considered non-polar and obviously as I'm close to 0 0.4 I've got a, um, the difference in the um, charge on the either ends of my molecule is, is less and less while the difference in the charge on these ends are very high okay up to about 1.7 which is actually slightly less than a half okay up to about 1.7 these are considered covalent polar they still covalent bonds but they are now polar covalent bonds so they've shared an electron okay but while sharing that electron and water is an example of that let me show you uh, water's molecule is with water we have oxygen molecule here and then we have a hydrogen molecule here and water water once or not water oxygen oxygen has six valence electrons so he needs two more so he lends or he shares one with a hydrogen and he shares another one with hydrogen as well. So as you can see, and the reason why this one is polar is because the, uh, the electrons hang here. They hang here. The one electron that uh, hydrogen is sharing is pulled away from this end. Okay. Making these ends more positively charged okay and because the electrons are pulled in this direction it gives the oxygen a more negative charge okay because now he's got two extra um, uh, electrons from the two hydrogens but the hydrogens have the electrons that they have, the one that they have is being pulled towards the oxygen and the one that they are sharing is still part of oxygen okay? which means that the one end of the hydrogen molecule uh, sorry, hydrogen atom is negatively charged, the other end is positively charged, giving oxygen, uh, sorry, giving water a polar, it's a covalent polar bond now how could we have looked at it? Well, if I go to my periodic table, I see oxygen is 3.44, the electron negativity. Hydrogen is 2.2. So if I calculate the electron negativity here, I get 3.44 minus 2.2. 2.2 and what does that give me? That gives me 1,24. 1, 1,24 is around here, which makes it a covalent bond. Um, <laughs> covalent bond, and I see that I misspelled co-polar terribly. Poland. <laughs> okay, so. He, it, uh, water is a covalent polar bond. Okay, now what does this mean? Okay, what effect does it have to know what, uh, whether something is polar or nonpolar? Well, one thing is that polar substances, polar substances. does or do not do not mix 
or solve into non-polar substances. Okay. So, for example, we know that if we put salt in water, that it will dissolve. Why does it dissolve? Because salt is a polar and water is a covalent polar. However, something like... Uh, well, let's look at petrol. Uh, petrol is also called octane. Uh, or that's not pure octane petrol, so that is C is eight carbons and eighteen hydrogens. Okay, C and eighteen hydrogens. Okay, and this is the the, the chemical com uh, composition of octane petrol. Okay, and uh, octane fuel. And if we go and look at the electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen, we find that carbon has 2.55, hydrogen 2.2. So in the difference in electronegativity is 2.55 minus 2.2, giving me 0, 0.35. Five, and if we see where that fits in, it's around about here. Okay, and so now you can see that this is a nonpolar, this is a nonpolar covalent bond. Okay, covalent bond. What that means is that there is no, um, uh, or, or that the forces attracted um, between the molecules in. Um, something like petrol is not very strong okay so um, because it's nonpolar it does not mix well with petrol okay because petrol is polar petrol will attract other petrol molecules uh, sorry um, and water will attract other water molecules so that if I were to have water molecules and petrol molecules together the water will attract the other water molecules separating itself from the nonpolar petrol substance. Okay, so that is one application of the polarity. It determines the uh, whether substances will mix or can be solved um, into one another. Um, and another application is it tells us the type of forces that exist between the molecules themselves. So, for example, we see that strong ionic bonds are strong forces between them, which means that the molecules want to be close together. When molecules have strong forces in between them, they are very likely to be solids at um, low temperatures. Okay, so for example, salt we know is a solid. Okay, and and you have to go at very high temperatures to excite these molecules so much that they separate from one another. Okay, water on the other end. Um, has, is, is not as strong polar and therefore it is a, a liquid but it's not a gas at room temperature. If I look at a non-polar, um, a, non uh, a very non-polar like H2 where the electronegativity is zero, this is a gas at very high temperature, uh, sorry, at very low temperatures even. Okay, so um, if we look at something, so you might ask, but why is petrol, for example, petrol is a liquid, okay? Yes, but petrol has a very high uh, rate of uh, evaporation. In other words, if you leave petrol, um, a container with petrol open, it will evaporate very quickly out of the, that container. Okay, there's a special word for it, we'll learn it later. And also, petrol has a very low boiling point. If you were to boil it, it will boil much quicker than water. Why so? And again, as uh, the, the difference in electronegativity decreases, the attractive forces between particles reduce.